Good evening, calculus class. Today we are going to be talking about topic seven, definition of continuity. All right, so we're gonna start with the definition of continuity at a number A. A function f is continuous at A, number A, if the limit as x approaches A of f of x equals f of A. This basically means there is no gap in the curve at that point. So as we can see in this picture, we have a smooth curve. And if we were to take the limit as x approaches a, so from the left and from the right, we would see that the value of the limit is approaching the same value of the function, the y value. So in order to check continuity, um, we have to do three things. So every time it asks you, is this function continuous, you have to start with these three things. First one, f of a is defined. So that means that a is in the domain of f. The limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. And then the last one, which basically says that one and two are the exact same value. So you can have f of a defined and the limit existing, but if these two are not the exact same value, then three is, does not work. Therefore, that function would not be continuous. So let's do an example. Is f of x continuous at x equals one? So we have a piecewise function. We're gonna do each one of these. So the first one is that you have to determine is f of one defined since we are looking at x equals one. Well, x equals one, it says that we have to use the bottom piece, so four minus x. I'm gonna plug one in for x, so I get four minus one, which equals three. So yes, f of one is defined. Now I have to determine if the limit as x approaches one of f of x exists. So in order to do that, you have to check both the left and the right limits. So I'm gonna check from the left of one. So if I'm going to the left of one, that means the numbers are gonna be smaller than one. So I'm going to use the top piece and I'm gonna plug in one. And when I do, I get two. I'm gonna do the exact same thing from the right, but this time I'm gonna use the bottom piece and I'm gonna get three. Now, because the left and the right are not the same, therefore I say that the limit does not exist. So since this is not true, we do not have to um, check step three because we can't. So you can stop there and conclude that f of x is not continuous at x equals one because the limit as x approaches one of f of x does not exist. So when you conclude, don't just say yes or no, give me a y. Okay. Now with continuities, that brings us to what are discontinuities. So if f is defined near a, we say that f has a discontinuity at a, or f is discontinuous at a, if f is not continuous at a. So like our previous example, we could say it was not continuous at one because the limit did not exist. There are three types of discontinuities. The first one is what we call removable discontinuity. A, this is a discontinuity that can be removed by redefining f at the number a. So graphically, what does this look like? So if you have a function, right, and notice that in this first graph, I have to make a little, I have to remove my pencil from the paper to get to the other side. And same with this one. The difference between these two is that this function, f of a, does exist. It's just that this value and the limit value are not the same. So therefore, part three would not work. This one does not have f of a. So f of a does not exist. So part one doesn't work and you can stop there. The second 
type of discontinuity is infinite discontinuity. This is a discontinuity where the limit of f as x approaches a is either infinity or negative infinity. So basically you have a vertical asymptote. It makes sense that a function cannot be continuous when you have a vertical asymptote. So here are two examples, right? You have one where you have the function from the left and the right going to positive infinity, even though f of a does exist. And here you have them going opposite directions. This one, f of a does not exist, so you would be able to stop there. The third one is what's called jump discontinuity at a. This is a discontinuity where the left hand and right hand limits are different at a, and neither limit is infinite or negative infinite, infinity. So graphically, this means that basically you would have to jump to get to the other part of the graph. So <clears throat> the left and right hand limits are different. So on the piece or on this step um, function, you can see the right is approaching one side and the left is approaching another. And same with this one. So it is possible to have a one-sided um, continuity. So you get a function can be continuous just from the left or just from the right. So in order for a function to be continuous from the left, that means that the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals f of a, and vice versa for right. So the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals f of a. The only difference with one-sided continuity is that you only have to check one of the limits. So this one-sided continuity helps us check continuity on an interval. So a function f is continuous on an interval if it is continuous at every number in the interval. So this means if f is defined only on one side of an endpoint of the interval, we understand continuous at the endpoint to mean continuous from the right or the left um, of that value. So an example, if we have f of x equals the square root of one minus x squared, and it is continuous on the closed interval negative one to one. So first thing, you need to show that this function is continuous everywhere inside of negative one to one. Ideally, you basically would choose every possible number between negative one and one and do the three checks from the definition. But there are an infinite number of values between negative one and one. You do not have to check all of them. So basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose some arbitrary number in that interval. So you're going to let there be some arbitrary number, and I'm gonna call that number c, exist between negative one and one. Notice how not including the endpoints. That's where the one-sided continuity comes into place. We will do that last. So our goal now is to show that the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals f of c. So how do we do that? Well, you're going to do the three steps, but instead of using an actual number, you're going to use C. So is F of C defined? So I'm going to plug in C into my X value and I get something out. So yes, it is defined. The second step is to it, it determine if the limit as X approaches C exists. Well, since we know f of c exists everywhere in the interval, you don't have to check both limits because it'll get you the same thing. So <clears throat> you're going to take the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals the limit as x approaches c, and you're going to plug in c, and you do get a uh, value for the limit. So yes, the limit exists. Step three is to determine if one and two are the exact same value. And one does equal two, so yes, they are the same. So now we can conclude that f of x is continuous 
on the inter open interval from negative 1 to 1. We can't say on the closed interval yet because we have to still check each of the endpoints. So we have to go from the left or from the right of negative 1 and to the left of 1 to check those endpoints. So you only do this step if you have a closed interval. Some problems will give you only an open interval, so therefore you wouldn't have to check the endpoints. All right, so you have to first determine if the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x equals f of negative 1, and then vice versa from the left of 1. So you're going to just do the three-step process um, as your check. So plug in negative 1. What do you get? You get a value out, 0. So therefore, f of negative 1 does exist. Now I'm going to determine the limit from the right. I can plug in negative 1. If you wanted to, you can plug in a number really, really close to negative 1 from the right, and you should see that the limit is approaching 0. The value of the function and the limit are the exact same value, so therefore f of x is continuous from the right of negative 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing with positive 1. Plug in to determine if f of 1 exists. It does at 0. Check it with the limit. You get 0 again. The value of the function and the limit are the same, therefore f of x is continuous from the left of 1. So now since you've checked the endpoints, now you can make an overall conclusion. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this little triangle of three dots, but this basically is a symbol for therefore. And that's how you can conclude proofs. So we can say that therefore f of x equals the square root of 1 minus x squared is continuous on the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. Alrighty, um, I hope you have a good night and I will see you tomorrow.